Hey, how's it going everybody? This is Mike and I'm here for the weekly film community chat and I'm very late. James and Ian did theirs a couple of days ago, so I'm way behind. Sorry about that. The topic for this week is what is our favorite film genre and why? Okay, so for me that's probably very easy to answer. I have always said that my favorite genre is horror films and I still feel that way to a very large extent. And I have to qualify that statement. Well, I'm talking about the horror films of the 1930s, the 40s, up into the 50s, and, and into maybe the mid-60s. And then I just sort of have a cutoff point where I uh, become more selective about watching horror movies, including the ones that are made in this day and age. So, so I, I can't really say why I had such an attraction for horror films, but it's just something that started when I was very, very young. Um, I, I've, I've said this in, in a lot of other videos, so you may want to shut this off if, you heard, if you've heard this all before, but I was very fortunate that when I was uh, extremely young, uh, my parents took the whole family to see uh, a couple of classic horror films back in the late 1950s. We saw The House on Haunted Hill. When it came out in 1958, we saw The Bat, which came out, I think, the following year, maybe the same year, I'm not sure. Then we saw The Tingler with Vincent Price. Um, in, that was 1960, right? So that's that's where it all got started for me. But the, the big thing for me in getting to see classic movies and falling in love with the horror genre was watching them on television, which... Now, when I grew up, of course, we had no way of recording anything or buying something off of, off of a shelf in a store and, and watching it whenever we wanted to. Either you saw it at the movies when it came out, and you may never see it again unless it got re-released, uh, and then you waited for it to come on television, which luckily most films eventually did make it to television. And so that started for me also about maybe 1959, 1960, and it started with the universal classic films that were showing during that time. And I just totally fell in love with them. And I love them to this day. Um, let's see. Now, there were there were a lot of contemporary films, and that mean I, I mean by that the films that were actually being released in the 60s, the late 50s and the 60s when I was growing up that I never I didn't get to see until years later when they came on television. For example, I can only remember seeing one of the Hammer films during that time, and that was the uh, remake of The Mummy, which came out in 1959. I remember going to see that, and I don't remember seeing any of the others, the Dracula films, Frankenstein, the, the Curse of the Werewolf, none of those. I waited to see those when they finally came on television, uh, late 60s and all during the 70s, and then I caught up with all of them. Let's see, I also did not see all of the Roger Corman, Edgar Allan Poe movies from American International Pictures. I saw a few of them, but I did not see all of them, and I had to wait for those to come on TV as well. Now, here's, here's a true story about my favorite in that series, which happens to be The Pit and the Pendulum, came out in 1961. I didn't see it then. And I, that was also about the time when I started reading monster magazines. So I would see all these, these wonderful pictures of Vincent Price and Barbara Steele from that film. And that's how I first started finding out about these people and just being fascinated by their imagery. And um, so I knew a lot about these movies years before I got a chance to see them. I knew what the posters looked like. I knew what the plots were, uh, all sorts of things. So... I was ready to fall in love with this stuff before I even saw them. So The Pit and the Pendulum, it was released to TV, I think maybe 1969, maybe 1970. I'm not completely sure. But I didn't get a chance to see it on TV until about 1970, I think, which I would have been 19 years old. And I was living at home with my parents, um, working second shift in a factory which turned out to be a lifetime commitment, working second shift, which meant that I didn't see primetime TV, right? And no way, to cat, no way to record or anything like that. So I remember that when I found out that The Pit and the Pendulum was going to be shown on TV, I actually called in sick to work one night, because it was showing one night, uh, just, to, just to watch this stupid movie. 
because I thought this is my first chance, maybe my only chance to ever see this movie. Right. Well, who knew back then that someday I would have, you know, three copies of it and I could watch it anytime I want. But yeah, I actually did that. It was uh, complete with commercial breaks and on a, a 21 inch TV screen that had kind of a snowy image, you know, because that, that channel, we, we didn't get it very well. But I was, uh, I was happy as a clam. I was very, very happy and enraptured by the chance to see it. Uh, it was interesting that my parents would allow me to do that because they they were very big on responsibility. If you were supposed to go to a job, you go to a job. I mean, my father worked seven nights a week all his life, and he almost never called in sick ever. He had to be, um, you know, on a on a stretcher in order for him to call in sick. So, but they let me do that. I think they understood that I was just so so uh, passionate about seeing these movies that they just kind of accepted it, which a uh, very surprising thing. But yeah, so that's that's kind of a crazy story about how obsessed I was about horror movies back in those days. Now, my, my feeling about horror movies eventually kind of faded away a little bit, and I, you know, at some point I threw out all the monster magazines and I just uh, kept, a th kept things in my memory, but I wasn't I wasn't pursuing, well, there was no way. There was no way to see these things unless they showed up on TV. I didn't know much about the, the films of Barbara Steele other than Black Sunday, which I waited until sometime in the very late 60s, maybe early 70s, to see that on television. And I didn't see that very often. Um, the only time I saw her on the big screen in the 60s during her, her big era of making films, of, of being a star in films, was in 1964 when I saw Castle of Blood. The others that I saw during that era and going into the 70s were The Horrible Dr. Hitchcock and Nightmare Castle, which showed on TV quite a bit. Other than that, I really knew nothing about the other films that she made. That didn't, that didn't come into my radar until maybe the late 1970s when I started reading about her in film books. Uh, this big nostalgia craze was coming out in the late 70s and up into the 80s where people were writing about uh, these these movies and, and the, the actors who were in them. So I learned a lot more about her and was able to find sources to buy these films when the VHS era came in, which is what I did. So it wasn't until the VHS era that I started renewing my, my love for all of these old universal films and uh, the, the low budget monogram films with Lugosi and Karloff and, and John Carradine back in the 1940s. I, I love all those movies. I love all the science fiction films of the 1950s, the monster films, the space movies. Now here's something I don't think I've mentioned to anybody about collecting and, and how I organize my films in my TV room. I put my horror films and my science fiction films together on the same shelves. To me, they're just, they're, they're sort of linked together. And I, to me, they are pretty much the same genre. And maybe a lot of people don't feel that way. Uh, as far as collecting, once again, I pretty much think that I'm finished with uh, collecting horror films, except for something that comes along every once in a while that may not have been released before, or it might come out on a better version. But I have all the the Universal Classics. I have a lot of the low-budget Poverty Row Classics from Monogram and those other studios. Uh, I have pretty much everything that Barbara Steele has, both horror and non-horror. There are a lot of her films that still aren't available uh, anywhere that I know of. So... But I think all of her horror films have been have become available. So as far as that goes, uh, collecting horror films, I'm pretty much finished. So I, I concentrate more now on other genres that I've fallen in love with. For example, film noir, which both Ian and James talked about a little bit in their videos. Uh, James is trying to uh, get into watching film noir. He, he's not very passionate about it yet, but he feels like it's something he would like to do. And I like to encourage him to do that and anyone else who would, who would be interested in finding out about these wonderful films. And Ian says that it is now his favorite genre. I think that's very cool. I, there are a lot of film noir things that, that I love and there's, there's still quite a bit that I've never seen. So th there's uh, always something new to explore. There are other genres that I like as well. I've been trying to become more familiar with action type films. Um, 
which is why I watched all the, the Dirty Harry films. I think of those as being action films. I've been watching a lot of things with uh, actors like Mark Wahlberg lately and trying to uh, just get used to seeing more violent imagery and just uh, expand my horizons a little bit. Uh, I like a lot of other things too. I like I like old Hollywood musicals. Really love the old uh, musicals from Warner Brothers and MGM, uh, 20th Century Fox back in those days. Just a lot of really cool movies. Um, I like foreign movies. I like, uh, gee, what else do I like? Silent movies. Uh, so I guess uh, even though horror films are definitely number one, I think I've um, expanded quite a bit. So I can't think of any particular genre. The comic book films, now I, I admit that I'm not, I, I lost track of those very early on. I loved the original Superman films back in the 70s with Christopher Reeve, uh, especially the first two. They were terrific. I watched the first Spider-Man film, uh, the first Iron Man film. Really enjoy these things. And I just, something that I... It's not it's not a high priority for me, but I feel like I'd sort of like to catch up with everybody else and just at least know something about these movies and, uh, again, keep expanding my horizons a little bit. Okay, so this is about 11 minutes of me blathering on. So that's me talking about horror films, uh, genres, and all that, and I apologize for this this video coming so late. It's almost time for the next weekend chat or weekly chat. Okay, so good night. And have a great weekend.